QuickBooks Online 2023 Budgeted Income Statement Data Input. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have open the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, try incognito or another browser. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome, selecting the three dots in the browser and new incognito window, typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're gonna be comparing the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicating it. Right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicating it. Back to the tab to the middle, going to the reports on the left hand side. We want to open up one of the faves, that being the balance sheet, the major financial statement report. If you're in the business view, by the way, in the sample company, you know where the reports are at. They're in the business overview on the left and then the reports. We're gonna go tap to the right and open up the reports on the left. This time the other favorite financial, the profit and loss. Closing up the hand boogie up top, range in the changing, 010123 to 022823. Run it to refresh it. Let's actually see it on a side on a on a side by side, by the way. Go into the months and then run it to refresh it. And then we'll tab to the middle. Close up the boogie, change the range from 010123 to 022823, drop down in a blaze of glory. Shop. Okay, where did that come from? I don't, we're gonna run it, we're gonna run it to refresh it. There's where we're at. So we're gonna be putting in a budget in prior presentations. We talked about how we might structure this, looking at the past data as the starting point for our budget. But instead of constructing the budget in QuickBooks, we'll often export the financial statement to Excel is what I would typically do, and then adjust it, uh, taking into consideration not just past data, but projecting information into the future about the economy, about the changes we're gonna make, advertising changes, how much we're gonna invest in property plans and equipment, and so on and so forth, to adjust our budget. Once adjusted, we're gonna put it back in, which is what we're doing now, to QuickBooks in the budget area. Why? So that we can run budget versus actual reports as time passes. That's what QuickBooks does well. So let's go to the first tab to enter our budget. We're gonna to go to the cog dropdown up top. This is where the budget's located in the tools and the budget. So we have our budget. This is the first budget that we've done. So we add your first budget. Budgets makes, make growing your business easier. Just pre-fill with your data, add your targets and start towards your goal. All right, so we can have multiple budgets. We're gonna be putting together our, our budget here. It's gonna be an income statement side of things. So we're focusing in on the income statement. I'm just gonna call it budget one or something like that. We've got the fiscal year of 2023. So I'm going to put it, this information for the whole year of 2023, imagining that we're entering the data prior to the actual data that we put in for 2023. But I want it to overlap some of the actual data so we can run the budget versus actual reports. So then we have the intervals. Monthly is the default, but you could enter your budgets on a quarterly or yearly basis if you so choose. We'll keep it on the monthly. You can pre-fill the information with the 2022 information or the actual 2023 information uh, if you so choose. The standard concept would be like, for example, if you're a bookkeeper 
and you and you want to just provide the, the data of a budget you could just preview fill the budget with the prior year data for example but you don't typically want to do that and leave it that way because you could run reports budget versus actual which would basically compare prior year income statement to the current year income statement but that's kind of redundant because you could already run reports by 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 running just a, a comparative income statement to the prior year to date numbers so this is, would just be a starting point normally that's why i think most people if they're really going to do a, a a budget that's going to add value they're going to export it to like excel or something like that and then make their adjustments which will be more complex than just the prior year numbers and then you've got a uh, uh, subdivided uh, information don't subdivide and, and by customer so we're not going to deal with the subdivide information here. We're just going to now do the data input. You just basically have our income statement from top to bottom. Note that there's a lot of accounts in here, some of which we might not actually be using because in our chart of accounts, we've, we had all the accounts that were given to us by Intuit. So let's take a quick look at that before I start. Right click, duplicate. I'm going to drag this to the left. I'm going to go into our chart of accounts. I'm going to close this out because I have it open in another tab, scrolling down to the accounting and then going into our chart of accounts. If you're in the business view, by the way, the chart of accounts are located in the bookkeeping tab and then the chart of accounts. And you got to click that little button to see it if you're in the sample company. And so if I close this up, we're looking at, in, at the income statement accounts down here on the chart of accounts. So I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm looking at account types in the income statement accounts, income and expenses. Now, remember our general rule was that we're going to, as we're adding data, if there's an account already set up, I'll use that account. If account is set up, but I don't like the name of it, I'll use the account, then change the name of it. If there's no account, then I'll add another account as I'm entering the data. And then at some point in the future, after entering a few months of data, you probably want to go into the general ledger, look for those accounts that are not being used and make them inactive. And part of the reason you might do that is because it makes some data input in the future a little bit easier. And one of the things that might make easier is your budget, because note your budget is taking into account all these, all these accounts, whether they're being used or not. We have all these cost of goods sold accounts and so on and we're not using all of those accounts. Okay, that said, uh, let's move on. Moving on. All right, so we're gonna enter this data. We've got the billable expense income. So let's just enter this in. January billable expense income. I gotta say uh, next here in order to get to my actual data input. So I'm on January. We're gonna say that was, what was it? Now I forgot. Now you made me forget, 100. And then I'm just going to copy it across with the little arrow, which just copies it across. Boom. No problem. All right. And then we're going to keep going down. We're going to say, all right, this is the 1130 equipment rental. So that's down here. I'm going to say 1130. Copy it across. Now this one increased. We said it's going to increase by uh, 0.05 each time. Now, notice for some reason, I think the, the desktop version has a, a way for you to increase it by uh, a percent and the online doesn't have that, which is kind of annoying. So I have to enter it basically line by line. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. You can, you can uh, adjust scrolling in or out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to data input it line by line for February, March, uh, and so on and so forth. According to our budget at the end of the process, I should get up to here. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details. I'll just give you the recap. So this is what we have. So you could just check it out. So January on through December. Okay, so then the next one that we had, the next, the next item that we had was sale of product. So now we have sale of product. 58451. So sale of product. I'm going to go here, holding control so you can kind of see it a little bit more. Sale of product. We want to be in here. Once again, I'm going to enter this uh, because we had an increase over time uh, each month by an increase of 10% compounded. So I'll just increase the numbers from our budget here. 
So this is where we stand then. So just so you could recap, these are the numbers uh, entered for that one. Sale of product, scrolling on over to uh, the total. So here's the total. And so, and we can't like adjust the size of these columns and whatnot. So you've got that uh, capacity. All right, so let's go to the next one. Scrolling back on over, it'll get easier when we get to the expense side of things because we won't have these changes. We've got the service items and these ones also, these ones increased by $1,000 all the way across. So this one, I'm gonna say, all right, let's pull that one in. Services started at the 4150. And so this one would be 5150. And this would be 6150. So this one would be 7150, 8150, tab, tab, 9150, tab, tab, 10150, uh, 11150, 12150, 13150, 14150, and 15150. So something like that. The next one is the cost of goods sold. It is increasing uh, in, the, in the same way as the sales because it's related to the sales. So I'm just gonna I'll punch this in. I'll show you the results of that. Now notice if I make an error on any of this data input, we'll see that I'll, I'll go ahead and review it when we run the report. So I'm not too worried about making an error because I'm gonna go back in and fix it. If you see an error, then we'll get to it. We'll fix it at a future point. Now cost of goods sold is down here where we have the parent account and all these uh, sub accounts. We didn't really use any of the sub accounts. So we're just gonna be using the main cost of goods sold. We only have one cost of goods sold account that we're gonna be using. We'll plug the numbers in there. So there we have it. So we've entered those in. These are the numbers for the cost of goods sold totaling out to these 491,347. So the next item that we have, it should be a little bit easier going forward, at least for a couple of these. The bank fees are gonna be 18. So let's go back on over and go down to the bank fees. So I'm gonna to try to click off of the cost of goods sold somewhere. And otherwise it kind of it kind of copies it down when you when you move, which is a little annoying. And a nice little trick for doing that is if you click on a cell that doesn't have anything in it, and then you can go over here and close it, then then you can get off of that thing where you're scrolling around and it keeps that it keeps that one line item in there. I think they keep it, they do it that way so possibly you can compare one line item to another as you're doing the data input, but it can be kind of annoying sometimes. All right, in any case, we're looking for the bank uh, service fees. So what was I looking for? I'm looking for the bank service charges. So here they are down here. So there they are. So we're gonna say, boom, it's a little bit hard to find because we have so many accounts and we're gonna say 18. So we need to delete some of those GL accounts would be nice, but I'm gonna copy that across. Boom, I'm gonna click off of it to another cell and then close it out so I can scroll without it driving me crazy. Let's scroll back in a little bit. And then the next one that we have is gonna be that liability insurance. So the insurance stuff is down here, liability. So this one, we had a data input in, uh, what is this, February? February, uh, 6,000 in Feb. And then I think it was September. September, I'm tabbing over, uh, was another 6,000, I believe. Is that correct? Is that correct? The other side was in, or the other amount was in September, yes. Okay, next item. We've got the uh, internet for the business. Okay, so I'm gonna click off of this one again and then uh, scroll down. And, and so I'm so now I can scroll down without it driving me crazy. And we're gonna say internet. So that was, they put it under office, I think, in here somewhere, the internet for the business. There it is, it's in its own place. It's right under the, right under the insurance. It's so close, I didn't see it. All right, so there's $90, $90 there for January. 90, I'm gonna copy it across. So that's good. I'm gonna click on another row and then X out so I can scroll around. So there is that one, bringing it back to the front. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got the taxes, 
these are the payroll stuff. So I'm going to go into the payroll info. So that should be in its own little subcategory payroll. So we've got the taxes on payroll. This one had that step up. So we got the four, uh, 486, which I'll copy across, which is 486, copy across, but then it's stepped up in, uh, what is this? In July to 535. In July, it stepped up. So uh, July to 535, 535, and then I'll copy that across. That's where it was after the step up that happened in July. Okay, same thing over here with the next one. So I'm gonna hold control and scroll down a bit. The next one is the wages. So if I go into the wages, it was at, it started at the 6983. So 6983, 6983. I'm gonna copy that across and then we're gonna step it up at the same point in July, it went up to 7682. So this is gonna be 7682, and then I'll copy that across. So there's that one. All right, and then I'm gonna click on something else and X out of it, hold control, scroll in a bit. All right, next one. So those are those, are those two supplies, 350 supplies. So it's just the supplies account. So there did, did, should be underneath some here. And I think we just used the parent account for supplies instead of breaking it out to, to supplies materials. So I could make these inactive if I'm not support, if I'm not going to use the supplies materials sub account, I'm just going to put 350, 350. And when you make something inactive, you should, you should actually make it not a sub account and then make it inactive because Otherwise, if you want to make a sub account later, uh, it could mess things up if you have sub accounts that are inactive or in so any case. So then we're going to go back on over here and see what else we've got. The next one is telephone, telephone. All right. Holding control down, scrolling up. We've got telephone January. That one was for uh, three, eight, five. So three, eight, five. Let's copy that across. Boom, I'm gonna click on something else and X out. Hold control, scroll back down a bit, then scroll back up. All right, so there's the telephone. And next, next up, we've got the utilities. So utilities, after the telephone somewhere, utilities. I'm just gonna use the parent account. I didn't break it out into the sub accounts. I just grouped them into one utility account. So we're going to say that that's the 634. So 634, copy it across. And then I'm going to click on something else and X out, scroll down. So I can go to the left and scroll back in, which is kind of tedious, but there it is. Utilities, no gain, depreciation. Let's put that in. One, two, three, six. So depreciation. It's going to be one, two, three, six. I'll copy it across. I'm going to scroll down so I can get back to my starting point. And then I'll scroll back in over here. And then we've got uh, interest expense, three, three, four. So interest expense is going to be here. We'll say three, three, four, copy it across, holding control, scroll down, back to the left and then scroll back in. And then it's easier to do this, by the way, if you have two screens, of course, <laughs> then, then you don't have to go back and forth, but other miscellaneous 75. So other miscellaneous, we're going to say seven, five, copy it across, hold control, scroll down. And that's what we have that's what we have thus far. So we've got our totals down here. You can kind of check down the totals down here, uh, which are at the the uh, 125, 965 is the first total you'd probably check, 125, and I'm a little off. So something, there's an issue here with something of it. 
So I'm going to drill down on that in uh, a future presentation. So we'll dive into the differences in a future presentation. For now, I'm going to save it and we'll come back into it. And I'm going to close this back out and just note that what we can do now is construct the actual financial statements, which are located in the reports on the left hand side for the budget. And if I just type in budget, you've got the overview and the budget versus actual. The budget versus actual is kind of like the one that's quite nice as time passes because then you've got the actual numbers compared to the budget. And that's one of the major things that you're going to be looking for oftentimes when you're generating the budget. So next time we'll, we'll look for those differences and we'll make some, uh, make, we'll tie everything in onto the budget. We'll show you how to go back into the budget and make changes if you need to with it. And then we'll generate these reports and we'll get into these reports in a little bit more detail.